hey everyone I wanted to do a video on how to do like free embellishments by your sewing machine I guess they're not technically free but um, they're gonna be very low cost they're gonna require things like thread um, maybe some pearl cotton cording scrap fabric we all have scrap fabric we're looking for uses for I believe right um, maybe some specialty needles I think everything on the list is like five dollars or less so it's very affordable stuff um, so my list includes starting off with Pentax and I have another video that goes over the ins and outs on how to do Pentax on your machine that I will link down below but kind of expanding on that idea and this goes for all of the embellishments I'm going to uh, I'm going to list here there is a classic heirloom um, take on them and then there's you know you can add some color make it fun and just run with it like I say it is sewing you do you there's no right and wrong I truly believe that um, so with the Pentax you can do the traditional route which is in that video and the traditional route is talking about you know you're trying to match your the thread that you're using to make the Pentax um, to the to the fabric that you're using so it just sort of blends right in and just looks seamless right um, like magic or something um, and it's the end of the day by the way which is the hot mess you see in front of you <laughs> Um, and I'm trying to get my words out before bedtime. Anyway, so the way you can run with Pentax is you can put some color in your thread. Um, use, use colored thread. <laughs> um, and it, particularly in that bobbin, if you were to put some color in there, it's going to go back and forth, back and forth on the underside of your fabric and create that sort of shadow embroidered effect to it. It's the same sort of concept. So that would look really cool. Um, another thing is that you could just do regular tucks. So you're just going to fold your fabric over, give it an ironing, and then do a straight stitch. And however however far your needle is from that folded edge is how wide your tuck is going to be, whether that's a quarter inch, a three eighths, half inch, you decide that. And that is an embellishment that is very inexpensive. Um, expanding on that, you could put some fabric in between that tuck. I'm just pulling some corduroy that I had laying around um, from an, a dress that I just made for Audrey. I love this. This Side note, this is featherwear corduroy. It's one of my favorite fabrics for like the fall, winter time. Um, but yeah, you could just stuff some fabric in between here and then have that sort of shadow tuck look to it. I did this on a dress but for Audrey, I believe about a year ago now, and I did I just used Imperial Batiste and I did one um, like one layer of it for the first tuck and I did two layers of it for the second tuck and then three layers. I think, I think that's how it went. Maybe I did four layers for the bottom tuck. I can't remember now. But And then I used a wing needle on top of it and did a hem stitch. Um, several different embellishments, all very inexpensive, and had some shadow tucks with that whole, you know, the, the dots above, which is, is quite, quite nice, I, th I think at least. <laughs> um, then you can do some, you can just use a twin needle for some shadow work. Um, you can use like a scallop sort of stitch and make sure that see the thing with pin tucks is that you've increased the tension on your upper thread and that's what gets that pin tuck to to you know raise up um, if you leave the tension alone on the upper thread and it's not causing any uneven tension you know between your two threads then you can just do some some whatever scallops or whatever and your, it'll still lay flat and it will give you that shadow embroidered of same sort of concept because your bobbin's going back and forth on the underside of your fabric and you can pick whatever colors you want and then have a really a really pretty design off of that. Um, another thing is going back to those those pin tucks is you can put um, a cording and what you're going to do whether that well you could use cording you could use pearl cotton you could use embroidery floss whatever you know add some color with embroidery floss or pearl cotton or whatever but if uh, I guess the cording would be the traditional route and whatever fiber you're using you're gonna s put in between your twin needles and um, it's gonna just give body to that pin tuck and it's always going to give body, but of course, if you choose a color, it's going to give that shadow colored effect to it, which is really just a neat little thing. 
You could apply this to all sorts of garments, boys, girls, whatever. Yourself. <laughs> you don't always have to sew it for your children. You can sew it for yourself with these things too. Um, particularly with the colors, it's, it gives a very like modern sort of feel to it. Uh, so other things on this list. Let me look. Oh, you can make your own entredeau. Or at least it'll appear like entredeau. Um, going back with a, like a, well, okay. You could just do a plain pin stitch, and that's going to be a wing needle. I believe the difference between a pin stitch and a hem stitch. Don't quote me on this. I am largely self-taught, and I am often wrong. But I, I believe the difference is that a pin stitch just does, you know, those lovely dots all in a row, but kind of like a straight stitch. And I believe then a hem stitch does the lovely dots, and it mar marries it with a zigzag. So it goes over every now and again, but it has that lovely large, you know, row, and then it goes over with the zigzag. Don't quote me. So if you just do pin stitches, you can do this right smack dab in the middle of your fabric. You're not inserting any sort of lace or entredeau or anything like that. It's nothing tricky. You're just putting your needle down and sewing. You are going to want to put some stabilizer behind it. The two stabilizers that I like the most are Stitch in the Ditch and Sulky Sullivan. Sulky Sullivan, is that what it's called? So Stitch in the Ditch I find to be easier to use while you're at the machine, but it can be a little bit cumbersome. It's not terrible, but to tear it away, you've got to kind of tear it the right direction, and even then you'll have a little bit of, of doodads still poke in there in, in between your stitches. So it's not the easiest thing to get rid of, um, but it's not horrible. Meanwhile, Sullivan's a little bit on the opposite. It's not as nice to work with on your machine. At least I don't think so. It's not horrible, but it's not as easy as stitch in the ditch for me. Um, but I mean, you put that sucker under water. You do have to drench it, but you put that sucker under water and it is gone. There is no residue. There is nothing. There's nothing to pick out from your stitches or anything. I will have both linked down below. Um, take it for what it's worth. But yeah, you'll want a stabilizer for pin stitches, and you just do whatever design you want. You do it right in the middle of your fabric, you do, do yourself a flower, or you could do like a little diamond, um, that would be pretty for boys, you could do a heart, whatever. Um, now then, you could take hem stitches, stitches and you could do hem stitches by themselves, but you could also introduce a piece of cording to it. And if you introduce a piece of cording or, um, or pull of cotton or floss or whatever, if you do that sort of number um, and loop it around, you've created yourself entredeau. Wait, that's not a hem stitch. You use a different stitch on your machine. It starts with a V. Um, it's a Vene Venetian stitch. Yeah, it's a, Vene a Venetian stitch. Oh my gosh, I can get that out of my mouth. Um, but yeah, the Venetian stitch basically it does three. It does three rows. So like the outside two are like a hem stitch. Um, well, it's kind of two. It's kind of two hem stitches together. So the outside two are your single. Your needle's only going to go over there like once, so it's not really going to show a hole. But it's the middle stitch that's going to the middle row that's going to have your big lovely line of rows. However, if you don't have one of those stitches on your machine, you can still do this with a zigzag. It's a little bit more cumbersome, um, but it can be done. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your zigzag and you're going to go over one side of that cording or whatever you're using. Um, and then what you're going to do is make sure your needle is in the left position, put it, you know, needle down, turn your work around, bring that whatever fiber you're using, so in cording or, or whatever, bring that around, and then go over the other side of that cording. And so what that's gonna do is that middle row now you're hitting for the second time. It is a little bit more cumbersome because you're gonna have to make sure that the second round of zigzags are going into the first round of holes from that first round of zigzags. You see what I'm saying? And if you've got to be exact with this, if you're off by like, a thread in your in your material it's not gonna look as clean so um so yeah you just have got you have to really look at what you're doing but it can be done with a zigzag um now moving on to applique work this is a great way to use um to use scrap fabric okay put your scrap fabric on top and I'm talking about like little sections like you can see in my example I'm doing like a an inch or so square um, and you can just do a zigzag around that square or whatever 
shape you're using, whether that's a circle or, or, or what's another shape, a heart. <laughs> I got my list here. Um, whatever shape, and you've got yourself a little applique with a zigzag simple as that. Um, the other thing is that you could take your fabric and basically like if you put your fabric on t on top like on the right side of if you put your your scrap fabric the applique fabric on your the right side of your garment fabric you can call it an applique. If you put it on the wrong side of your garment you can have that that shadow fabric effect to it. Um, so maybe you pick out a more bold color. I am picking out again that corduroy. <laughs> it's a bold color and you can see how it just shadows underneath. You could create um, you know instead of a zigzag you could use a hem stitch with a wing needle you could use well you could use a wing needle which our size is 100 or 120 you could also use a just a larger needle like a size 90 is also a great option for those little dot the little dot effects particularly for itty bitty babies it's a very gentle like delicate look it's a great it's a great option to have you should play around with it if you have it um, but yeah you can use any of that and do a wing needle shadow work him applique whatever <laughs> onto that um, so moving on from there you can do something called puffing um, I use a ton of puffing I will link that video down below in Audrey's Easter dress this last year yeah it was this last year I will leave the timestamp for that video in the description box and you can look at puffing there but that's a great it's a great classic thing um, Another thing is drawn thread, and I tell you, I wish I have, I would have done more drawn thread by now for Henry. I thought I would have, and life has just kind of run with me a little bit, but um, I'm hoping to get into it. Drawn thread, I think, is one of those things you could just dive into it and study it and learn on it for a long time. But basically, if you are not familiar, you pull out um, like the horizontal threads of your material which is going to leave these vertical little like columns well vertical columns of course uh, <laughs> but um, then what you're going to do is take some thread um, the traditional way is to take a thread that's going to uh, just disappear and blend into your fabric so um, nothing that's going to stand out that's the traditional heirloom way and you're just going to it's a it's a series of patterns of wrapping the columns that are left those you know those threads that are left into various um, patterns and shape and weaving in and out of course you can take something with a color to it and we'll give it a little spice um, and give it a little modern twist or whatever make it your own um, something else that I thought I would have and, and I and I really should do a whole series on drawn thread I really should dive into it and learn it and then do a whole video series on it it's very it's it's it can be really exquisite stuff um, another thing that I thought I would have done for Henry by now and I really need to do this are shark teeth um, this is a way of folding fabric and it kind of creates a I guess a shark teeth look it's these little tiny diamonds so I guess you could see like a row of sharks teeth <laughs> um, but you can do that and leave it white or a crew or whatever and have it very traditional of course you could do stuff some fabric in there and have it a shadow work effect as well um, Another thing, you could just do pleats on your fabric, so whether that's inverted box pleats along a skirt instead of gathers, um, you know, so often we just do gathers, but you could just put yourself some inverted box pleats and that spices us up, spices it up a little bit, or you could do some knife pleats, whatever, you could do that along the bodice, you know, make it your own sort of thing. So pleats are a great thing to do. Um, oh, another thing is the shell edge. And then you can put this, this is more, I guess, commonly done on a slip, but nobody says you can't do this on like the, on an outside garment. You could do this to finish it, really any edge. Um, so that the neckline, sleeve, or uh, yeah, sleeves, <laughs> that's what those are called, sleeves. <laughs> or you could do like a hem or whatever. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to pick the blind hem stitch on your machine. And you're going to increase the tension on your 
upper thread a little bit and increasing this tension is going to cause um, a little bit of pulling which is going to lead to that little shell look to it. Does that make sense? Um, another thing is the Madeira applique. I have a whole video on how to do Madeira applique by machine that I will link down below. Uh, and then the last one is a technique that I have never heard said out loud. I've just read it a bunch of times, so I'm sure I'm going to mispronounce this. It's something called fag fagoting? Fagoting, if I'm saying that anywhere close to being right, which is probably not. But this is the idea of you're going to take um, two pieces of fabric that each have a folded edge to them, and you're going to join the pieces of fabric together with a space in between. And what that space is, is completely up to you personal preference or whatever um, but so you can take one piece of fabric you fold the edge over give it an ironing give the other piece of fabric fold the edge over give it an ironing then space them however far apart you want you can use some tape to help you maintain that spacing if you wish um, but you're going to want to pick there's a bunch of different stitches that would work for this on your machine uh, but you're going to want to pick a stitch that has at least three horizontal is positions okay so you're gonna have your piece of the fabric the first position will go into one of those folds the second position won't go into any fabric it'll just go into that space into that like into just the air um, and then the third position will go into the other piece of fabric into the other fold that's why you need at least three horizontal ish positions for you that stitch that you're going to choose. The honeycomb stitch is a great stitch to choose. Of course, if you have more than three, you'll just have more um, stitches going into like into nothing, into the air. Um, but you will have at least three. That way you've got the first horizontal going into the first fold of the fabric. Then again, number two goes into nothing and then number three goes into the other piece of fabric and you just do that over and over and over again and it gives what it mimics of course the fagoting if i'm saying that right technique is done by hand but it's going to mimic how it looks and uh, i think those are my techniques so that's my list of like free or low cost embellishments on your sewing machine. And of course, if you have any to add to the list, I'd love to hear from y'all. Please leave them down in the comments below. And if you have any questions, please leave those down, down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. And as always, I appreciate y'all for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time.